So as you can see, I've decided to try this again this week and see whether or not I can successfully talk and work on my modern folk embroidery, Mystery Sal. So I've preloaded another length and needle because I also had, I had trouble getting the angle of the camera right this morning on the stitching. And it's so pretty that I wanted to make sure that it was clearly in the screen in case you felt like looking up while you were stitching. So we'll see how well this works today. I did have a good laugh at myself last week when I was doing the editing and you know when you're watching yourself make a rather gigantic mistake and there's really nothing you can do to stop it. Anyways, so in case you're brand new, welcome. This is my weekly Stitch With Me video and I try to work on a I never work on the same thing more than a few weeks in a row. I think the one time I did, maybe, was that Shades of Wine? Did I work on Shades of Wine? Maybe three weeks instead of just two. And I think the Prairie Schooler, the Woodland Santas, I may have worked on that more than two weeks. Not sure. Anyways. It is Friday morning here in London, Ontario, Canada. And the Facebook group, Friday Off the Grid, our members in the Eastern Hemisphere have already started their Friday night stitch in. And that's where we take a nice large chunk of time if we can and make some progress on our whips and we share our pictures on the group. You can find a link to that in the show notes below. It's called Friday Off the Grid. Now, let's see. Here's where things could go south if I'm not careful. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. Go to the right. So it's Friday morning and it is Good Friday, so it's a holiday. The family is home, Sarah's still sleeping. Nicholas and John are downstairs. John's making breakfast. And if I'm if I if I'm if my nose is telling me correctly, there's bacon and eggs on the menu. I'm all right with that. John's a pretty good cook. There are a few things that he makes very well. So it's a nice uh, a nice treat for breakfast this morning. He does a fair bit of cooking here. Uh, we're both very busy, so we tend to share those duties. We don't eat out a lot, so cooking is a, something we, we both do. We both take care of that. Also the grocery shopping, so that we have things to actually cook when the time rolls around. Nicholas has a school project due on Tuesday because Monday is a holiday as well. It is a bank holiday here, not a 
uh, retail holiday, as it were. So my husband does have to work on Monday. And I think my family is staying until Monday, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what Steve and Kathy's plans are, but I, I'm pretty positive my parents are staying until Monday. And so, let's see. To concentrate, because I do not want to redo this. So Nicholas has a project due on the Tuesday that he goes back to school. This project has not been started yet because he's nine and it's one of those projects that's been sent home where you just know that the parents are going to end up doing three quarters of the work. And frankly, I've sort of been dreading it a little bit and Nicholas is not the kind of kid who's a self-motivator who's going to say, oh, right, I have that project to get done. I better get down to it. And unfortunately for him, his mother is the same way. So we've sort of left it, even though we've known about it for about a week. Well, I guess not a full week. They haven't been, they've only been back in school since, uh, actually, no, it has been two weeks. Holy cow, where did that go? So no, we've known about it since at least Monday, and uh, we have not started it. And when I say we, I mean we. So I have a bunch of things going on today. So I'm going to at least start discussing it with him this morning before I leave the house. And then I'm, I know John will, you know, will probably end up doing more than his fair share as well. So between the two of us, It's, a, it's one of those projects where you're supposed to make something. And it's about light and sound. And so you have to make something and then you have to write a presentation on it. Can I just, can I just, can you hear the sigh in my voice? Because I just, I know full well it's going to not go very well when we have to uh, convince him that it's time to get it done. It's going to be rather unpleasant. Where am I going here? So that one is done. So I think what I'm going to do is, I'm just gonna bring my needle through and I'll sew it in later. No, I'm not actually, cause it's too short. Ah. Anyways, I'll pull that through there and I'll end it later. Okay, moving on. This is a 40 count linen. It's an R&R &R Reproductions. And the colorway is called Patriot's Brew. And it's absolutely gorgeous. It's very fine. The, I love the color. It's very subtle. Um, very subtle dye and very natural looking, which I love. I love the small count. And if you haven't heard me or seen me talk about this project, I am using uh, Vicki Clayton hand dyed silk in the colorway Zafra Cobalt. And sadly, these are discontinued. She no longer dyes silk stitching thread. She dyes other things, but uh, no longer offers her line of hand dyed silk threads. All right, so I'm gonna have to pay attention here because I think what I'm going to do is travel up and then I don't have to count or pay attention, but I just have to get this part right. Let's see, there should be 
All right, if I've done this right, if I've counted correctly, then this should be the place where I'm going. I'm wrong. I think this is it. Yeah, this is it. Okay. That's better. Okay, now I'm on the right track. So that's a relief. Phew. And now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working on the zigzag pattern that goes all the way, travels all the way back and it makes a really beautiful corner, a little cornice in our design. I'm loving seeing everybody's version of this mystery cell, the variations in thread, variations in fabric. It's really, it's just so nice to see everybody putting their own spin on such a gorgeous design. The fourth part has just been released. I just got an email, I think yesterday, that the, the fourth part is released. So I will be downloading that later this weekend, purchasing and downloading that later this weekend. Even though I'm not even close to finishing part one, I will be gathering and collecting each part as it comes out. It was a very, very, very gray, rainy day yesterday, and it's still quite gray out today. And I've, I've been up for a few hours already. I was getting some knitting done this morning because we are recording a Fiber Friends podcast in a few hours, and I wanted to be prepared to have a few things to talk about. I've made some I've made some decisions about my knitting and moving forward with my knitting projects. And I'll I'll tell you about them here just briefly because I'm probably going to go into great detail with the girls on the other podcast, but I've I've decided to try to become more of a monogamous project knitter because knitting for me is more project driven the projects that i make are more of a useful nature blankets hats socks you know we use them we wear them and whereas cross stitch and stitching and embroidery it's instead of being about utility it's about art and I know knitting knitting is an art as well and you can create works of art but that's not the kind of knitter that I am I am very very much a utilitarian knitter I want to use the things that I that I knit whereas stitching for me it's all about the dreaming, the planning, the color, the, and, and knitting is a bit as well. Let's be honest. But when it comes down to it, I feel like I'm just not getting those things done that I would like to. And a great example is I'm knitting a blanket for my mother. And, 
you know, I, we talked about it three years ago for her birthday. And that's when I purchased the yarn and it was, you know, it was a birthday present. I was going to make her this beautiful blanket and it is a beautiful blanket, but it's not done. And, uh, it's been on her birthday this year, it will have been three years and it's, it's a big blanket and it's not an, it's not a simple, simple pattern. So I think I have a little bit of leeway to have a bit of an excuse, but still three years is too long. And part of that is because I am a multi-crafter and I have too many other things on the go that I'm working on at the same time. So I think for me, and because I want to continue my monthly high tea, new start, using my stash with my stitching, and because it's more about, you know, the aesthetic for me for stitching and knitting is, is, you know, getting the, getting the end result, I am going to try to focus on one large project and a few small projects. So I have three projects on the go that I concentrated on over the last week. The hat for the knitting tutorial, which I've just finished my ribbing. So I did, I did a fair bit of extra ribbing and I need to do a little tutorial on a make one increase, uh, which hasn't happened yet. I was supposed to do that this week, but you know, life got in the way, Nicholas got sick and then I wasn't feeling all that great. And so, and, and I have had a lot of sewing to do for Evertote, which is amazing. So no complaints but it meant that I did not get the uh, knitting tutorial up this week. So that is on my, my radar to try and get that done. So I'm working on the hat and I'm working on a sock. And other than that, I'm going to work on my mom's blanket until it's done. That's the plan. So stitching, I just want to work on what I want to work on when I want to work on it. <laughs> and I think that will give me enough flexibility to suit my personality. I start to feel very hemmed in when I have to only work on one thing. But if I feel that there's some leeway with some other things, then I think I can make it work. All right, I am going to pause this recording just for a moment because the way my camera is set up, I need to move it. Um, I need to move my frame to sew in my ends and I'm going to load up two more lengths of floss, get them ready to go. And then, oh, I think I can do a few more with this one. This silk is just so, so beautiful. It's shiny, pretty, I just, I love blue so much. Oh, that reminds me, I had a question um, that I never answered. And so someone had sent me a question on YouTube about my shades of blue. That's the Northern Expressions Needleworks piece, uh, shades of blue. And I haven't shown it for a while and she wanted to know what the threads were that I was using for that. And I have no idea who asked me this question because I can't remember, but I do remember the question. And if, if in case she's watching today, uh, it is, I'm using the called for dinky dyes threads. And what I'm going to do is I will, I will make sure that I talk about shades of blue on Monday because that actually has been on my mind, probably because I'm working on this one, to uh, put it back on my lap frame and get a few stitches in it. So I'm going to talk, I, I will show and talk about shades of blue on Monday. And I know there are a few other people out there who are stitching it, Sharon and Leticia. Uh, Leticia, you should 
maybe pull yours out, put a few stitches in it. Have, I have, have you guys seen, Letitia has been working on the twisted band sampler and she has been a fairly monogamous stitcher lately and she is making amazing progress. It is beautiful. These shades of rust and yellow and, and gold and blue and, and just really, really, really beautiful. So, but Letitia, I know you're also working on, uh, you've got shades of blue in your stash. Now, I know there, she, she, Letitia was toying with the idea of restarting it on, uh, once she, my, she saw my sister-in-law, Kathy. Kathy's doing it on 28 count, one over one. Even weave. And it's stunning. And I think Letitia had thought maybe she might restart hers. And I can't remember if she has or not. But anyways, that is coming up. I'm going to get that out, dust it off for Monday. That's the plan. Tonight, I'm going to be working on my chalk design because... I only have today and tomorrow to try and finish that up before the end of the month. And I really, 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 really want to finish that before the end of the month. All right, I'm gonna hit the pause button for just a moment. I'll be right back. Okay, back to it. Oops. Two lengths. A floss loaded in, ready to go. I should be able to concentrate. So far today is going much, much better than last week. Making a little bit more progress and not having to frog. Though I should never say that, right? Until, until things are done, because you never know what's gonna happen. However, things are looking good so far. So I was watching uh, some floss tube last night. I have been meaning to watch these girls for a long time because, well, they're fellow Canadians and they live in Ontario and they're sisters. I am talking about Stitching Social and I subscribed to them a while ago, but I wanted to wait to watch them until... When when I watch someone new, I like to be able to watch the first time. The first time I watch them, I like to be able to watch an episode in its entirety and not have to, you know, keep pausing to do life. And so I've been saving their podcast to watch. And so last night I was up late and the house was quiet and I thought, oh, now's a perfect time. And those girls are wonderful. So if you're looking for a channel to watch this weekend, Stitching Social, and their projects are beautiful. They finish a lot of, of projects. So, you know, they're, they have lots of whips, they have lots of FFOs, and their stitching is beautiful. It was a really enjoyable hour. So I, um, I will put a link to their channel in the drop down box because I know I don't tend to edit my stitch with me videos so I probably will not edit in their information on the screen but I will make sure that I put it in the drop down box so that you can easily find their channel but they were great fellow Canadians who understand the whole milk jug thing. So funny, the milk jug. I'm still getting questions on the milk jug, which is hilarious. And if you asked me this question, don't feel bad because you were not the only person to ask me this question. I must have had four or five people ask me whether or not the milk takes on a smell because it's open in the fridge. Not to my not to my nose or taste, it does not take on the smells of the fridge. I mean, I don't put open things of cut onion in my fridge because, well, that would make everything smell. But no, it doesn't take on a smell and it doesn't taste like plastic. But, you know, I've been drinking milk from a, from a bag since I was, 
a kid, like little, little, when I started drinking milk, that's how my milk has always come. So maybe my milk does taste like plastic and I just don't know it, but I don't think so because I've had other milk and it tastes like milk. <laughs> that's so funny. And I absolutely do not mind the questions about the milk bag. I think it's hilarious. And I'm happy to answer any more questions about the milk bag if you have any more questions. So no, the milk, to my taste, the milk does not smell like the smells in your fridge. And it does not taste like plastic. It tastes like milk. And I use it in my coffee every day. Oh, this, this little motif, I could be getting myself into trouble here. I'm going to have to pay attention to what I'm doing. I'm just going to double check. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I know where I'm headed. So let's keep this needle going and see where we go. Ginger Gerald's been working on his hat. He's had a few problems with his hat, but overall I think he's on the right track now and his hat, he's, he's still working on the ribbing, just like I've just finished mine. And uh, he, it looks great. It looks really, really good. Looks like ribbing is supposed to look on a hat. And I've been enjoying watching his London piece come to life. And what else has been, what else caught my eye? Oh, have you guys seen Michelle Bendy did uh, last week's floss tube video? She shared a thrift shop find. So last week or two weeks ago, she found this, it's basically, a. it looks like a wooden paddle. And it says Jose Cuervo on it. And I believe its original use was for um, a bottle of tequila and shot glasses. Okay. And Michelle, when she saw this, her creative juices kicked in. And I am telling you, she FFO'd that Jose Cuervo wooden paddle into the most amazing finished object that I think I've seen in in a while because it's just so creative um and I know McKenna um McKenna does this all the time as well if you did you see the clock that she did she took out the guts of the clock and she put her finished piece inside the face of the clock and it's stunning just stunning. So Michelle, she stitched um, Frida and she FFO'd Frida on top of this uh, paddle. So it kind of reminds me of an old fashioned horn book, you know, that sort of that, that paddle. And it's stunning. I mean, you know, she's, she's got, she's done a really, really beautiful job. So I saw it FFO'd on Instagram, I think. So I suspect she's going to talk about it in next Tuesday's video. I haven't watched her floss tube from this Tuesday yet, or have I? I you guys, I am getting confused because I'm trying to watch more floss tube now and I'm you know, it's hard to keep track of who talks about what, when, and, and all of these amazing things are all kind of jumbled up in my head of what I've seen where. And of course I never write anything down. <laughs> that would be too simple. Uh, anyway. All right. One more here. And then this goes down here. Look at that. The frog has not come for a visit today yet. 
One, two. Isn't that funny? You know, people who don't stitch and they see your work and they say, oh, I could never do that. And you think, well, it's, it's just counting. It really is. It's really just counting. Oh, so pretty. Loving this. Okay, so I think I'm going to... I think I'm hearing rumbles from below that breakfast is ready. So I think I better... Because I want to show that I appreciate the fact that breakfast has been made for me, I should probably go and uh, show my appreciation by eating it while it's still hot. And then it would probably be even more appreciated if I clean up the kitchen. I think that's fair, don't you? Even though I hate doing dishes. I hate doing dishes. <laughs> I know there are lots of people who don't mind doing dishes. Dishes are not my jam. Isn't that, that's such a funny expression when I hear people say that. I feel like I'm too old to use that expression. Things are my jam. But in this case, it fits. Doing dishes is not my jam. But I do appreciate the breakfast though. So I guess I better pull my weight. So after breakfast, I am heading out to record the Fiber Friends episode. And then I will, this afternoon, I'll get this video loaded up so that we can all stitch together tonight and all weekend long. If you record floss tube videos, if you record stitch with me or just regular floss tube episodes, and you would like to share them on the Facebook group, please do. We encourage everybody to share anything that is stitching related on the Facebook group. Uh, the, the Facebook group is getting big. We're almost at 2000 members. And you know, when you, when you've got a large group of people together, <clears throat> <coughs> excuse me, when you've got a large group of people, uh, you know, we have to we have to just make sure that everybody's kind of on the same page. So we try to keep the group as, you know, not, we don't try to control the group, but we try to encourage people to stay positive. And we try to avoid negativity on the group. And, you know, life is real, right? Life is not Mr. Rogers 24-7 things happen in our lives. Bad things happen. Life is hard. And there are lots of other places on the internet where there's opportunities to talk about how terrible things are, or get into arguments and online negativity. And we really, really would like to keep the Facebook Friday off the grid group, just a place where that just doesn't happen. And it really is like the Bob Ross, Mr. Rogers, you know, romper room kind of just a nice place to be where all we talk about is stitching and how happy we are that we know how to stitch and how pretty and beautiful and funny and things that happen with our stitching. So we keep it kind, we keep it uh, stitching related, and we also keep it PG, only because, not because I have anything wrong with anything that is, you know, you stitch what floats your boat. It doesn't, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a prude, I'm not um, against anything like that. You know, I, I, I think I've mentioned before that this is why I like to edit my videos because I have a tendency to have a um, affinity for certain four letter words. <laughs> uh, I, I'm always a little embarrassed every time I admit that, but 
uh, you know, it's true, but I don't, I leave it off the Facebook group. It's because the world is a big place and just in order to keep everybody uh, on the same page and not offend anyone, if you wouldn't share it or show it to your grandma, we keep it off the group. And that way we just, we just avoid, uh, you know, the sort of comments that, that start to happen because it's the internet. You cannot inject tone of voice and facial expressions into your words. And so it's very easy to take something that someone says the wrong way. It's just so easy to happen. And I think that that's why there's so much negativity because people can't see your face. They can't hear you. They, and it's, it's just, it just happens. So we try to keep it positive and you know what? It works. People are amazing. It's a really terrific group. Really, really is. And I feel really lucky that, that, you know, that we've gotten to, you know, we're getting to know each other and it's like the best group of stitchers ever. And we're adding new people every day. It's amazing. All right, guys, that's it for me. Breakfast is ready. And I'm going to get, I'm going to get the call in just a moment. So I'd like to be ready before the call comes. And then I can just fly downstairs and enjoy my breakfast. Have a wonderful Friday. Happy Easter. If you celebrate, um, enjoy family time, enjoy your day off. If that's what it is to you, which is also pretty awesome just to have some time with your family and your friends. And you know, if you are, if you are by yourself this weekend and you're a stitcher, well, you're never by yourself because trust me, there's a big community out there and we're all happy to keep you company. And I'm hoping that you guys are going to keep me company tonight too. So happy stitching, happy weekend. And I will see you on Monday for a regular floss tube update. And you can look forward to seeing my non-existent progress on shades of blue, but there will be progress. It's coming. Happy stitching. Take care.